we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Stephen and I were interested in discovering the link that the audience doesn't know. We wanted to show the side of president that is a little bit ambivalent, who is not as strong, who is not always as presidential. And I think the photography, and particularly Stephen's staging and Stephen's camera work, which was much more restrained, reflected that human side of President Lincoln. I wanted to step into the 19th century and I wanted to make a film that represented as closely as possible the times and the mood of the nation, the mood of the individuals trying to solve these problems and trying to find these solutions. I wanted to feel there was a real sense of authenticity on the set, where the only real imposition would be that there was a camera and there were monitors. The movie takes place in 1860, so everything was lit with gas lamps or oil lamps. If there are windows in the scene, then my light would come to the windows. This movie was driven by naturalistic lighting. My lens is very much in the background. Scenes play for long periods of time in one angle. I just wanted the scenes to exist in seemingly real time. And if I had gotten too fancy, I think it would have drawn the attention away from some very complicated political points that Lincoln was trying to make. We are stepped out upon the world stage now. Now! With the fate of human dignity in our hands! Immediately, it was very clear to me that we should not do any specific color changes. We should just photograph it in the most beautiful, the most elegant way, simply because the language was so beautiful and the performances were so stunning. Slavery, sir, it's done. Daniel DeLewis became the president, so the hair and the makeup, that's very essential because that's an exterior part of the president's appearance. Mr. Lincoln, at that point in time, obviously, he was under enormous stress. Therefore, we wanted that stress to come out on Daniel Day-Lewis's face. There were two people working on him, myself and Kenny Myers. And it's not a look-alike from a makeup perspective. It's much more a feel-alike. There was a point where we just stopped looking at all reference, and it was working with his face and then creating the feel of Mr. Lincoln. There was never a day where my experience did not come to play on this film. When you look at the House of Representatives, we had 58 cast and 245 background, and 60% of them had facial hair. There are several scenes in the movie that we did almost exact recreation of existing images. Lincoln's inauguration, that's a recreation of existing photo, and Lincoln's deathbed, so we all put tremendous amount of attention to details, not that other movies don't. It just happens that we're making a movie about something of significance. This fight is for the United States of America. This is true collaboration between Stephen and I. He's a sophisticated storyteller. When he sees chances for good image, he will go for it. He likes to see characters against the windows where the light almost bleeds through the character's body. He's one of the few who wants to use that moment to emphasize the story. Steven's got really good aesthetics, and so much about making movies is about good aesthetics and ability to tell the stories.